Hey everyone, hope you're having a nice day. It's Tenorlans here. In this video I'd like to teach you some tricks to make your 3D renders look a bit better with Photoshop and a little bit of Lightroom too. In the background you're already gonna see a few examples from before and after. As you can see, a bit of color work and a nice background can do a lot to make your work better. Some of these things can be fixed in 3D too, but can take up a lot of time. That's why I like to get my designs about 95% of the way there in 3D and do the last part in Photoshop. Also when working with environments you often use HDRIs as a lighting source or just a basic sky. This means that it's pretty hard to control the background and what you exactly want in the background. Also how the colors will come together is very hard to control. So this is another reason why some Photoshop work can speed up your work a lot. Usually I don't really cut or change stuff on the model, I like to get all those mistakes out in 3D, but most of the time it's all about color and backgrounds in Photoshop. Of course not every design you make is gonna need a lot of post work, especially those high contrast neon type images can already look close to what you're aiming for. For example this one, you can see bright colors, high contrast, good lighting already, you see it doesn't need much more. But recently I've been working with bright environments outside and light pastel colors and I feel like it's really important to give it something extra after rendering because it can look really flat otherwise. Now I'm gonna show you two examples I've done in the past and I hope you can learn a thing or two. I also don't claim that my way is the only good way and it's far from perfect but I've gotten some requests to make this video so I hope I can at least help a few people. Alright, this is the first example I'm gonna show you. It's my latest work and I'm really happy with it, so I hope you can learn a few things. So this is the original, just the render and a basic background behind it. So I'm gonna show you how I've built this thing. Let me hide all these layers for you. So alright, just I started with a basic uh, background, just a white fill layer over the whole thing with a gradient and just a few tints of blue and then I'm gonna show you the render part first so I did one without the clouds and I did one with the clouds so for example this one you're gonna see I added a mask you can do that by pressing this button and everything black is gonna erase and everything white is gonna stay it's way better than just erasing stuff because you can still reverse it by just painting over in white to get it back so let's see, disabled, you're gonna see that these clouds still appear here and the light in this region changes a bit and I'd love to keep a, a bit of the lighting from this one without the clouds so I just decided to keep it that way and I also wanted to move the clouds up a bit uh, so I made a copy with just the clouds on the top and I also erased a little part here that didn't look as I wanted it to look so now let's get back to the background i'm gonna um, put these aside for a second and look at this one so usually when there's a nice sunset outside i just take a picture with my phone and i try to keep them in a little library and i use them as backgrounds i'm not always using my photos i sometimes use a few stock photos but um, most of the time it's just basic photos taken with my phone in the garden so for example this one, what I'll usually do is make a background that is a bit blue or depending on which colors I want in my piece and I just add the photo on top that I've used and just play with the blending modes a bit so usually I start on normal and just press the arrow down and go through all of them. You're gonna see the first ones aren't really um, good for this but when you come to lighten or screen or overlay soft light and stuff um, these can give all different look and it just depends on what you like but overlay um, was the best one in this case for me then I decided to make the top a little bit darker because I really wanted a feeling of getting a sky with stars and stuff on the top then I added a little background with stars the way I did that was with a really cool thing in Photoshop so if you go to I think it's window and extensions and if you click here you can download a few extensions most of them are for free and there are some really cool ones in there for example this one is called stock solo 
it's just a library with a bunch of stock photos that you can use so for example if we search for stars you're gonna see a bunch of photos and they are all, all really high quality so it's really cool to use um, it's not always the best but sometimes it can be really useful to get something quick so you don't have to search on google and stuff and you're also safe that uh, these images are are free to use so once again i play with the blending mode here you can see i chose lighten uh, what i often see is screen but it lets through a bit of the the darker tones and it can give you a bit of a smushy look most of those dark pictures are a bit tiny bit motion blurred as well as you can see so i like to keep it crisp and put it on lighten then often i add a bit of brightness and contrast to push the darks a little bit aside with um, by decreasing the by uh, decreasing the brightness and contrast a bit until I get the wanted effect and then by using levels um, you can see right here by dragging this I can control the amount of stars I want so in this case I did 1.5 um, but that just depends on personal preference of course by the way um, all these layers and effects I'm using you can all find these under the adjustments tab if you can't find it it's right here just take the box and it's gonna appear somewhere and just drag it in to a place where it's uh, handy to work with I use this all the time so this is really a must to have here uh, the things I used were brightness and contrast and levels so another magic trick I use often and I see not enough people use is the color lookups it's right here and it's just a selection of basic um, filters I'd say like you use on Instagram or whatever and the technique is just using a bunch of them but not overdoing them so using them only a little uh, for example on this one I used it on the background this one I used 100% but on backgrounds it can be a little different because I wanted to have a little bit of a stylish look but on your renders in the end just don't use too much of them at 100% you're way better off using 10 of them at 5% than using a few at 100 so be careful with not overdoing that so I added a tree strip look here as you can see it just makes the image a bit more contrasty and gives it a bit more color on this one fall colors just giving it a bit warmer tones and on this one just for the top i made it a little bit darker with a night from day then we have our three renders and only to the top clouds i added a bit of brightness and contrast and a little bit of um, turned the saturation down a little bit because they were a bit too bright for me and yeah that's just little details but um, that's not really too important next off I added the moon just using one of those stock photos again putting it on screen so the the back uh, the black background disappears and you end up with this it's just really important to experiment with a few pictures and find the best one not just be happy with the first one then to give the moon a bit of color I added a hue and saturation uh, to give it a color you just click the colorize button and changing the saturation and the color is gonna change the amount of color and which color you want so I give it a bit of an orange look and next off I added a bit of glow to the moon it's really subtle but that's what I found really important using Photoshop for example you take a brush take a light color for example something like this and clicking alt and right mouse button and dragging to the right you can make your brush a bit bigger so most of the time if you do this with just a basic soft brush you can see that it's way too bright if you add something like that to the moon so I like to turn it down a bit even then the, the glow can be okay but it's already a bit too much in my opinion so just being careful I put it pretty low and try to erase a bit so it's not too in your face if you know what I mean then I added a few more color lookups 
and that's really what makes the difference here just adding a few as you can see 37 percent 33 84 um, I think these Fuji and Kodak ones are really good so adding these you can see it makes a lot of difference just this one um, adding a bit more contrast and warmth to the image then this one turning the tones down a bit again and then this one just making it a bit brighter to make it look a lot better um, then the UN saturation I just changed the colors a little bit to make it a bit more pink and um, get rid of a bit of those yellows and greens in there um, and then I did some work in Lightroom um, I can advise you to always use a bit of Lightroom I haven't been using it for that long but the fact that I can install Lightroom on my phone and that I can just play the color correction on my phone a little bit because the image on your phone can sometimes look a little bit different than the one on your monitor and I always like to play a little bit on my phone so it looks right on my phone because most of the people that are gonna look on Instagram and stuff are gonna be looking on a phone with a similar screen so I like to get my last bit of color correction done on my phone or on my PC and as you can see it just makes the colors a bit more clear than uh, you'd expect maybe to to look like on on your monitor so if you go into Lightroom and we're looking at the settings it's just a little bit of contrast then pulling the down the temperature a bit so it's a little bit more blue and a little bit more purple and a little bit more saturation and that's really the only thing I I've done so as you can see not too much settings but it makes a lot more difference and makes it a lot more clear so yeah, that's it for the first one, and yeah, let's take a look at the second one. Right, so this is the second one, also one of my favorite pieces I've done. And as you can see, this is really a huge, huge difference with the render. So you can see that it can be very, very important to uh, learn some Photoshop, because I've done this maybe in 15 minutes to get this result in Cinema 4D or whatever thing you're using it's really not that easy so um, let's take a look how I did it so let's erase all the layers once more so first of all I'm gonna take a look at the background so the background is just once again a gradient a little bit lighter this time I also added a bit of brightness to it um, I probably added that more towards the end when I already got a view of the background and just wanted it to look a bit, little bit lighter. Then I already added another one of my phone pictures. It's really, really subtle because once again in the end I decided to use a bit more of a second sky picture I used. So I also turned down the brightness a bit so you can see a few clouds and then I added another one on top. This is one of the stock images, once again using the overlay option. Then I imported my render, but as you can see, compared to the original, there's already something a lot different. So what did I do? I added a camera raw filter. So first of all, you want to make sure that if you right click, normally if you import an image, it's already going to be a smart object. But if you rasterize it, this little icon is going to disappear, which means all your effects and stuff are going to collapse into the image, so you can't really change it afterwards. So make sure if you're using effects like this, you convert your image to a smart object, and that way if you add filters or, or blur or something like that, it's all going to stay and you can easily change it. So for this option, you can find it right here with filters and then camera raw filter. It's basically a little bit like Lightroom with all these options and it's actually just as good. I just like to use Lightroom to add some things on my phone. Um, so for this one, let's take a look at what I did by double clicking on this one. You can change the settings. So as you can see, I just played a bit with exposure, contrast, and that's about it. I didn't do very much. But one other important thing is that I used a Z depth map. So what that is, for example, on this one, you can see I rendered a map that looks like this. And 
the way this is generated is that the things closer to you are going to be black and the things farther away are going to be white and you can change the, the relative distance so you can get maps like this as you can already see it's going to be useful to add some fog or something like that but i like to use it for making the the horizon edge blend a little bit with the background i've done so you can see that if i disable this one the line is really harsh but if i add this to a mask you're gonna see that it's gonna be fading in the background ni nice and even so the way i did this it's not too simple to do um, you have to do some work for it so i like to make a new file the same size as the one i'm using before then i add the rendered z depth mask in here as you can see um, normally it's not going to have a background, so you want to add a white layer on the back. Sometimes you also want to look out for little artifacts. Um, for example, here you can see there's a little bit of a line in the middle. You want to make sure you um, take a little bit of white and, and paint that stuff out. Um, paint that stuff out and um, also between these parts, just a little bit of work to clean that up. But it's doable, I think. Next up, um, we want to invert the layer because we actually want the things in the back to be gone and the things in the front, like the house and stuff, to be, still be there. But now there's still a lot of grey in this image, which means that the opacity of this image is going to be about 50% and that's not really what we want. We just want the fade to be on the edge. So I'm going to add a little bit of brightness to it like this. And next up, we're going to take all these and we're going to merge them together. Then we're going to go to the select tool, click Ctrl A to select everything. So then we're going to go um, on edit, copy. We're going to go here, then click on the mask while holding Alt so you can open the mask itself. And then you're going to press paste and it's going to paste the, the mask we made here into this one. So I already um, put mine in there and you can go back to your image by just clicking on this image. So as you can see, it already makes a huge difference. Just clicking shift um, and clicking on the mask is going to enable and disable it. Then I wanted to add uh, some color. So I add a little bit of saturation. Next up, I copied the sky and just overlaid it on the the water so it gives it a little bit of a reflection of the sky in the water next up a few color lookups just minor adjustments not too much then color balance is also a nice one i just like to go into the shadows midtones and highlights and just change the colors a bit most of the time it's going to be a bit too much so you want to tone the opacity down if you like to get a bit wild with these Next up, I just added a basic particle image. It's um, it just looks like this. Um, you can find a lot of these on the internet too, so it's not really needed for this one. As you can see, it doesn't make a huge difference. You might just add a little bit of a photo filter or something like that too. Then I once again added a bit of saturation, actually a lot of saturation and then i try to change the color of the sky a bit so i made it a bit more light blue and added a bit more saturation here but as you can see it gives you some dirty pixelated details here from the the sky so i wanted to get rid of those and added just a layer with some some similar blue and painted over it on a lower opacity then added a bit of brightness and did the same thing again to make it fade a bit so it's not really a harsh blue line but it still looks natural and once again a bit of brightness so usually i just copy the group um, with everything in it so you can just um, select everything click right and then group um, images and then once a the group is here, you uh, duplicate, duplicate it and it just um, you just click right, merge group and it's going to be an image of everything that's in that group and it looks like this. 
and then I copy it again for safety right click change it to a smart object so I can add some some filters to it for example on this one as you can see on the bottom I added some blur so just going to filter blur Gaussian blur lens blur is also a good one but you can only use it when your layer is rasterized and then um, I just added a mask by going in here painting the top black and the bottom leaving it white so the white portion is gonna be blurred and then I also did some work in Lightroom and as you can see here the last Lightroom parts make uh, a lot of difference so let's take a little bit uh, of a look at that so as you can see right here I did a lot more changes on this one um, I did some of the highlights contrast and played with the the saturation and colors in here uh, changing it to a bit more purple bluish look which seems to work most of the time especially going with pastel colors I don't advise going too warm with your renders because on a phone they can look really smudgy and I like them to be uh, a bit more cold and blue because it gives it uh, more of a fresh look um, and also when going outside the sky is blue, everything reflects blue and having a bit of a colder temperature is not bad to achieve some, some nice colors, um, especially on mobile devices. So besides that I didn't do much, so some basic sliders in here, just play around, see what looks good and as you can see it's gonna make a lot of changes. So yeah, that's the two examples I have for you and uh, yeah. Just as a side note, if you made it this far into the video, a few days ago I just opened my print store on my website and I'd really appreciate it if you checked it out. I have different sizes, the quality is on museum print paper so it's really good. I ordered one myself and it's amazing. I'm gonna be sending them all myself, signing them on the back and I'll probably open the shop for about a month and see how well it goes and then send them all off at once. And in the future I can see if I'll reopen the store again if there's demand for it. But um, I'd really appreciate it if you checked it out and hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or suggestions feel free to leave them in the comments below. And yeah, see you guys in the next video.